Welcome to Taiwan Talks, covering the latest global news from a Taiwan perspective. I'm Albert Cho. China's economic growth is starting to slow, as reflected by recent statistical data. Market concerns are centered around the potential for deflation in China. However, some scholars remain optimistic, asserting that China's domestic market is on a path of gradual recovery. In this episode, we ex explore the stats of China's economic performance and examine its potential impacts on Taiwan. Joining us today are Charles Wu, Professor and Chair of Diplomacy, National Zhengzhi University, Ji Ho Zhang, Keelong City Counselor from DPP, and uh, Yan Yongmin, Associate Professor of Political Science from Donghai University. Very warm welcome to all on the show. Thank okay. you. In June, China's Consumer Price Index, CPI, experienced no year-on-year -year growth, marking a significant 28-month low. Meanwhile, the Producer Price Index, PPI, for the same period saw a more substantial year-on-year -year decline of 5.4%, reaching its lowest point in nearly seven and a half years. These indicators have raised concerns in the markets about the potential of deflationary pressures in China. Is deflation a real risk? This is my first question. Maybe, uh, Charles, you can answer this. Yeah, I mean, first, before we talk about uh, deflation, we talk about inflation, because mm -hmm. after the Ukraine war, most of the countries, especially in Europe, they suffer from the kind we call inflation problems. The mm -hmm. CPI is very high, mm -hmm. like six, seven, sometimes eight mm -hmm. per month. But if you look at China, about especially China's domestic economy, economy mm -hmm. uh, they suffer from what we call inflation. Mm -hmm. We look at the two index. First one is CPI. The mm -hmm. CPI is like 0 0.7 mm -hmm. in uh, this March, mm -hmm. uh, and also this month to month increase about 0 0.1. Mm -hmm. So this is a very serious problem for China. They mm -hmm. have suffered this kind of we call inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, also, another index called PPI is the mm -hmm. producer, uh, pr uh, the producer uh, price mm -hmm. uh, index, which is mm -hmm. how much, uh, how expensive mm -hmm. their uh, consumer products. Mm -hmm. And we can see that it, they have negative in, uh, increase mm -hmm. for the past months. Mm -hmm. So which means uh, the show of first very important phenomenon is Chinese uh, consumers, they are hesitate to what? to spend money. Mm -hmm. They prefer putting their money into the banks mm -hmm. or they don't want to go shopping. Mm -hmm. What causes the inflation in China? I think very important thing first is the uh, employment rate. Mm -hmm. The employment rate is about 20% right mm -hmm. now, which means one out of five people lost their job mm -hmm. after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. This is very crit critical uh, right. situations. Mm -hmm. If people lost their job, they cannot have enough uh, mm -hmm. savings and money for their, for example, housing and also the daily uh, uh, the, the daily shopping. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, uh, one of very serious problems for them is uh, they have the, the zero COVID policy during the, mm -hmm. the, the COVID, mm -hmm. which means sometimes we can see uh, the all the like, shops uh, shut down and mm -hmm. people don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. And even after the pandemic, right now they resume their normal lives. Mm -hmm. People are less likely to what? To spend money on their, uh, for example, housing or uh, the, the luxury goods. Mm -hmm. So if people in China hesitate or willing not to spend money, mm -hmm. it's not healthy for China's economy. Especially one thing we need to be aware of. Before, even before the pandemic, uh, the Chinese government, they had banned the real estate. They have this kind of uh, property uh, ban on the, the, the real uh, estate and housing, mm -hmm. which slowed down their uh, annual uh, growth rate on the GDPs. Mm -hmm. They usually say, oh, they are target the GDP rate, uh, growth rate about five. Last mm -hmm. year, they target five. but. At, in fact, they only have 3% of mm -hmm. increase. So after the pandemic, this is one thing China have to do is, first, they need to change or adjust their uh, monetary policies mm -hmm. and also change their what, the interest rate. Mm -hmm. Probably they need to lower down their interest rate, encourage the people moving the, withdraw the money from mm -hmm. the bank mm -hmm. and put it into the, uh, the market. Mm -hmm. Ask them to what? To so stimulate their the, the shopping and the spending money capabilities, mm -hmm. which probably can help them to uh, get out of the inflation. Jiho, mm -hmm. um, so if this depression in China continues on, you know, uh, in your imagination, what could be the worst scenario in China? Well, the worst scenario is not mm -hmm. that bad. I mean, uh, the signs that we see in China's economy mm -hmm. are this, what we witnessed in the 90s from Japan, from other economies that started to show a slowdown in the rapid boom that 
happened uh, a decade earlier. Mm. So we are seeing things slowing down, and they have been slowing down ever even be before the pandemic began. Mm. But uh, we are seeing like a sort of a, a, a a version of it on steroid, mm -hmm. where uh, uh, things look more drastic they, than 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 they should. Um, but it's be only because uh, two years of pandemic have sort of uh, uh, put away the uh, the the hide the way the uh, the signs that uh, China's uh, economy is uh, or already is slowing down. Uh, nonetheless, on the other hand, the domestic markets in China has displayed size of recovery. In May, total retail sales of consumer goods rose by 12.7% in comparison to the same period in the previous year, signifying a consistent upward trend in economic revival. So I wonder uh, if China's domestic circulation is still effective. Maybe Yongming can add up to this. Yeah, so I think uh, we need to take a moment to recap. Last year, China experienced two waves of pandemic, mm -hmm. and the first wave hit around uh, the end of March and uh, gradually lifted by early June. Mm -hmm. So uh, given a low baseline from last year, mm -hmm. the number 12.7% you just mentioned mm -hmm. isn't that impressive. Mm -hmm. <coughs> News from the Chinese Ministry of Commerce on uh, July 18th, uh, yesterday, um, about stimulating majors uh, uh, to boost domestic consumption mm -hmm. is a clear indicator that people just don't want to spend money, just mm -hmm. like Charles said. Mm -hmm. So in view of uh, uh, about the idea of uh, domestic circulation you just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, last the strategy uh, proposed by the Chinese government in the year of 2020, uh, mm -hmm. that was uh, the reason behind this uh, dual circulation strategy was to uh, diversify Chinese uh, economic growth engine. And uh, the Xi Jinping government uh, apparently tried to uh, shift it its uh, economic growth engine uh, to uh, focus on the domestic circulation mm. as the major propeller mm. and uh, to compensate the uh, declining uh, export-oriented economy. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea about uh, dual circulation. And uh, uh, apparently the Chinese government, they uh, have a strong hope that the domestic circulation can gradually catch up and to support the uh, domestic economy. However, uh, with substantial state intervention in the last few years and the pandemic and the, the uh, Ukraine-Russian uh, war, uh, the progress of this internal circulation, I think, has been limited. And the prospect of realizing dual circulation is still uncertain. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Jiho, so to stabilize the economic situation, the Chinese government needs to implement stimulating policies and invest in infrastructure projects. However, at present, the government is facing a shortage of resources to do so effectively. To address this, in mid-July, the Ministry of Finance conducted a substantial fundraising efforts by issue uh, 12 billion yen worth of treasury bonds in Hong Kong. This ins insurance is the largest in the past 15 years. What message does this fundraising move by the Chinese government uh, convey, you think? I think it's also, again, drawing lessons from Japan, mm -hmm. where uh, the central government is taking a lead mm -hmm. in uh, 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 shifting the debt from the local government into the uh, hands of the central government, mm -hmm. where uh, uh, stimulating the economy becomes the the, the, the primary uh, aim of the uh, uh, the overall policies. Therefore, okay. uh, uh, by issuing these uh, uh, bonds, uh, the government is sort of consuming or uh, taking up the uh, the central uh, role in in uh, shifting this debt, the local debts, into the central un uh, central government's hands, so that the the local government would still have a balance sheet where they can still uh, 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 invest uh, into the, uh, the, the infrastructures and whatnot to stimulate uh, the uh, already slowing down economy. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess the problem now uh, the Chinese economy is facing is that this is short of money, hot money into the markets, right? 
this is quite the opposite to the situation in the United States where they have to raise the interest rates uh, to curb the problem of inflation. It's quite opposite yeah. uh, in, in, in China. So kind of talking about the uh, FDI, the uh, foreign uh, direct investment uh, in, in China. So Beijing uh, has named 2023 the year of investing in China and the local officials have been energetically pursuing investment and the foreign capital from Europe and the United States. But despite their efforts, many officials have faced disappointment as they return empty-handed. Recent research indicates that foreign direct investment, like what I said, FDI, in China experienced a significant uh, decline, prompting to 20 billion in the first quarter uh, of this year, marking an 80% drop compared to the 100 billion uh, received during the same period last year. So, uh, Charles, what are the foreign investors thinking? You know, are they afraid of you know continue to invest in China? Yeah. Uh, before I talk about the, the FDI, mm. I want to add, out, add one thing. Sure. Uh, we talk about how to stimulate the domestic consumption of goods. Mm -hmm. If you pay attention to the news, uh, during the Labor Day in China, mm -hmm. uh, they have the, the Golden Week. Mm -hmm. If you pay attention, there's a, a news about they host a huge barbecue market, mm -hmm. night markets mm -hmm. in Shandong Zibo. Mm -hmm. They call Shandong Zibo Barbecue Festival. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of kind create this kind of image, mm -hmm. helping people, pushing people on the street. To shop. To, to shop, to spending purchase money. Stuff, yeah. Yes, it stimulate the domestic mm -hmm. economy. So mm -hmm. I think they know the problems, and they, know, they know the puzzles. They are going to suffer, they are suffering the puzzles. However, mm -hmm. they're they are going to solve this one. Mm -hmm. For the FDI, I think uh, mm -hmm. foreign uh, investors, they also aware, become aware about this kind of mm -hmm. economic downturn mm -hmm. in the uh, China markets. Mm -hmm. There are several critical factors which create this kind of uh, called dilemmas. First is uh, China's increased labor cost. Mm -hmm. We know uh, after the, the China's economy getting more developed, their labor is getting more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a data I checked out, I compared China and Malaysia and also Vietnam. And the mm -hmm. annual salary for China is right now is about 16,000 US dollars mm -hmm. annual. Okay. However, it's about double than the Malaysia salary. Malaysia mm -hmm. annual salary is about 8,000 right now. However, the Vietnam is 3,400, mm. which is one fifth of mm. China's labor. That's yearly, that's monthly, right? Annually. Uh, annually. Annually, annually. And salary, okay. uh, US dollars. Mm -hmm. So, which means <coughs> if investors they become aware of these issues, they will move out, move out from China's market. Mm -hmm. They will put their the, the, put the, the factories in Malaysia, Vietnam, or Cambodia. Mm -hmm. This is the first uh, problem. Second problem, like I mentioned, economic downturn, mm -hmm. economic slowdown. Uh, China's GDP growth rate is about 3.2. Uh, they are trying to maintain this one. They said they want to increase to five mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, all the investors, foreign investors, they are very, very careful about this uh, data, whether mm -hmm. China can get back to their glorious mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. the, the next one is about the trade tensions, also supply chain issues. Mm -hmm. Because we know during the uh, COVID time, they have zero COVID policy, which mm -hmm. all the factory, they, you know, they are request to shut down. Mm -hmm. So they kind of provide this kind of called the near shoring of, or even say French shoring, uh, a lot of factories they move to Southeast Asia mm. or Asia, uh, South Asia to build factories. Mm. Uh, this give a lot of foreign investors a chance to try to split their mm. uh, invest and also they risking uh, they risk a big political risk uh, associated with China. Yes, yeah. so this is a very important uh, and critical uh, issues we need to pay attention. Mm. Probably in the future. Uh, if Ch Chinese government want to get back those FDIs, mm -hmm. they probably need to have more uh, called the beef, mm -hmm. <laughs> provide more beef right. for, for the, the foreign investors, how to bring them back to China. Yeah, Yongmin, so do you think that if the Chinese, I mean the CCP, continu continue to behave uh, in its uh, uh, warrior uh, posture, uh, the FDI, the foreign companies, w would feel hesitant to invest in China? Well, uh, FDI is a very important issue mm. regarding uh, economic development, mm. and uh, you need money to boost domestic economy and uh, mm. to transform your industrial structure. Mm -hmm. So over the past few years, as we call the globaliza globalization era, mm -hmm. China, ha chi China uh, has become a world factory mm -hmm. with a huge influx of FDI mm -hmm. from those uh, multinational companies all over the world. And uh, these pattern of uh, this pattern of production uh, has uh, satisfied the consumption needs mm. 
uh, from uh, advanced economy in the Europe and uh, in uh, North America. Mm. However, this model is facing significant changes now. So the supply chain reshuffle, uh, Charles just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, triggered by a competition between the United States and China, has started to take effect. Mm. Uh, the latest data from uh, U.S. government has shown that China is uh, has uh, is no longer the primary, the first, the number one uh, trade partner with the United States. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, additionally, the global inflation crisis has led central banks over the world try to intervene. They try to suppress the, uh, and the result is the momentum of economic growth uh, dampened. So, uh, transnational companies they have become more cautious about uh, decision to mm. invest in China. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think the current business environment in China is not very friendly for uh, foreign companies and the foreigners. Mm -hmm. uh, as we see in the news uh, reports, uh, those uh, security visit by the Chinese government mm. and the uh, uh, latest uh, uh, latest uh, laws regarding espionage, all these kinds of measures has uh, made uh, foreigners or the foreign companies in China uh, feel threatened, and uh, they have lost their confidence in doing business in China. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, when President Deng Xiaoping in the 1980s decided to open the markets to the world, um, the Western democracies, even their leaders, uh, were thinking about the possibility of changing the uh, nature of China uh, in direction of democracy by changing its market first. But uh, since uh, President Xi Jinping uh, took uh, the power for the third term, uh, the, you know, the situation becomes kind of backwards, uh, slide back to this kind of authoritarian, uh, top-down control uh, market economy. So. The, you know, we should be not so surprised uh, about this uh, continual, continual the recession, even in the aftermath of the pandemic. One thing I want to say is, um, mm -hmm. if you look at uh, Xi Jinping's speech in mm -hmm. the 20, uh, 20th National Congress, he mentioned mm -hmm. several times about safety. Mm -hmm. The safety, not only is the national security safety, but mm -hmm. also financial and economic safety, mm -hmm. no matter it's online or mm -hmm. offline. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, he created an a office, pay attention to this kind of uh, financial safety issues, mm -hmm. and try to uh, make the, the finance and economic system mm -hmm. healthier, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, they pay attention to real estates and also uh, we call the monetary mm -hmm. issues. I can say it's become a more non-transparent However, I think uh, all these kind of mechanisms they have adopted mm -hmm. is try to prevent some potential crisis, mm -hmm. especially for example, Hunda issues, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Hunda real estate, they, have, mm -hmm. they face this kind of gigantic mm -hmm. uh, downturn and also declare bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So I think during the Xi's uh, administration, he will pay more attention to this kind of economic or mm -hmm. financial safety. Mm -hmm. But that's still top down after yep. all. Okay, let's now hear from Gary Tin. General Manager and uh, Managing Partner at Kimco Capital. Our political editor, Roth Wayne, spoke to him about the current state of the Chinese economy and uh, what this could mean for Taiwan. Let's take a look. Gary, many experts have said that the reason why China is willing to meet top U.S. officials from Blinken to Yellen is because of the dire state of the Chinese economy. What do you say to that? I think everyone knows right now the global situation is very complicated. Yes, before July, we see actually uh, even there are some uh, first tier officers go to the Beijing, including the Yellen. Some of the higher officers want to meet up with the uh, Chinese government. But before July, we also see the ESMO still do something about the protection, follow the United States status. And even Japan, they also announced they are uh, 23 semiconductor facilities is also has some uh, different regulation uh, to work with the Chinese. So I think even there is a political or politician go to the Beijing, but that means Actually, in the industry side or in the economic side, there are not any loosen so far at this moment. So if, if everybody have a look at the whole global economy, we know right now financial market, yes, it looks very good. But actually the recession, inflation, and the some of the even uh, uh, some of the global uh, economic situation is not so good. And even 
for the uh, investor is not so fear is cure. So right now, I think economic situation is not so good even for the China. China economies forecast and even the database showed uh, is not so good for the Chinese, including the domestic uh, consuming and even uh, some of the uh, business institution it did not very good performance. But right now, I think for the uh, thinking, we just heard uh, TSMC's founder, Morris Zhang, also announced right now the globalization uh, take back seat to the uh, national priority. So I think political thinking is always stand uh, before the economic thinking. So I don't think right now, even there are some officers go to the Beijing means uh, the, the uh, interaction between United States and the China is loosened. So right now, I don't think uh, anything will be better. Is there any way Beijing can fix many of its structural problems? What do you see Chinese officials taking on now in terms of fixing those structural issues? After the COVID-19, China's economy sure have a very good performance. But unfortunately, uh, actually, if we look at the database about the Chinese economy, actually it's not so good. Uh, if China want to rebound, uh, even go back to the before the COVID-19 situation, I think is very difficult at this moment. The reason is, uh, is because uncertainty. Because if you want to have a very good economic performance, you need to make sure what you will go for. Before COVID-19, everybody knows China will try and focus on the economic development. But after the COVID-19, uncertainty is in front of you. That means consumer uh, has some of insecure feeling. So I can understand right consumer confidence is not enough to spend what they want. If you understand Chinese situation, you, you know even today, saving rate uh, stand 44% uh, of GDP compared with the OECD 22%. So that means uh, Chinese consumer uh, will prefer to save uh, more money to face the uncertainty in the future. So that will be the problem for China to have a good performance in the economy. Another one is about the property or real estate. Real estate and the property is another problem. That means because the local government cannot have so uh, much uh, capacity to uh, help the real estate to back to the uh, boom market. That means uh, the Chinese consumer will fear it's not easy to make money. So you can see even next week, there will be a first time Chinese government will, uh, uh, will hold a very good global confidence to meet up with the global uh, fund investor to tell everyone China is where good performance in the Chinese economy. But right now, if you cannot make sure the uh, investor confidence come back and the consumer or Chinese people would like to spend it more, that would be a big problem for the Chinese economic focus. And uh, the, the, the last one is also about the uh, local government. Right now, the local government need more uh, like fiscal transfer to help the state pension fund to help the local government to solve the problem about that. So right now, I think it's a very tough time for the Chinese government. If in 2023, if the Chinese government can find a good solution to help the China economy, I believe that will be also benefit the global economic situation. But if China is still stuck in kind of a uh, not so good performance in the Chinese economy, that, that means a uh, global situation will not so good. With the Chinese economy underperforming, what opportunities do you see for Taiwan? Given that Taiwan is part of the U.S. supply chain realignment and supplies chips to the world, what other alternatives do you believe Taiwan has? I think right now is a very good uh, opportunity for Taiwan to find out another opportunity to, uh, to have the Taiwanese business to upgrade. Why I say that? First of all, uh, I believe Taiwan is very small, and we don't have a so big uh, domestic market. But because 
uh, there is a very complicated situation, especially about geopolitical situation in the United States and China. So right now we need to decide what is our strategy to face the future situation. Maybe we can pick the balancing hedge or stay put. Yeah, right now everybody will say Taiwan pick uh, American to be our insurance, but maybe for sometimes about the business, especially about sensitive uh, industry segment, maybe we can stay put. And also we can also follow a Zian industry or India's uh, way to do some balancing actor. So I think Taiwan has a very good industry base. If we can pick kind of balancing actor or hedging or stay put to do some of the combination of these three kind of options, then we can have Taiwanese business to find, to approve. We are best solution provide. And we can do some different way to have a Taiwan business go overseas. Because right now, globalization is gone. For example, how Taiwanese business can work with the India government and also have India supply chain and the India buy or trying to penetrate the India domestic market. The government and uh, maybe some of the academic industry can help the Chinese, Taiwanese business to find a way. And also Southeast Asia is also a very good market for Taiwan. Okay, um, as we uh, just watched uh, Mr. Tin, he talked about the uh, Chinese economy, how sluggish it is, and you know, what role could Taiwan play. Uh, he, see, he saw this definitely as an opportunity. Uh, for example, he raised uh, the point that uh, Taiwan should increase or improve on its uh, um, <clears throat> industry nature. Uh, so, so maybe, Jill, you, you can talk about this. You, you think Taiwan can play a role in this uh, scenario where, where China uh, kind of suffer from this recession? Yeah, upgrading Taiwan's I industry has always been supposed to be a, a primary uh, objective of the ta Taiwan economy. That's, that's probably the underlying theme for the past two decades of the Taiwan economy. Mm -hmm. But the, the existence of the, the or the enormity of the Chinese market has sort of stalled Taiwan's uh, 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 drive to upgrade its own uh, industry for the past two decades as well, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, s older industries or uh, industries that are, are more primitive can always move to China mm -hmm. and have as a, a vast uh, market and, and labors mm -hmm. for them to, uh, to, to implement their uh, or, or expand their, or their, their old uh, model mm -hmm. of economic. Um, so, so in the 90s, in the early 2000s, that is sort of the case. Mm -hmm. But now that if, the ch if China is, uh, China is still slowing down and Taiwan has no other option mm -hmm. but to really upgrade mm -hmm. those industries that are still left for us to upgrade. So I believe it is an opportunity for mm -hmm. us. And it's also that uh, investment decisions will never be made entirely on economics. Mm -hmm. There are security reasons, mm -hmm. there are um, uh, political reasons. Mm -hmm. Those are the risks that these FDIs have taken mm -hmm. uh, into consideration. In, in in diversifying diversifying their investment else elsewhere, and Taiwan can uh, seize this opportunity mm -hmm. to become that hub, to become that mm -hmm. place where uh, the, uh, we we have the uh, resources, we have the capacity, we have the uh, intellectual uh, uh, labor force that is capable mm -hmm. of uh, uh, taking up the job, and so yes, it is an opportunity, and we shouldn't miss it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, as Jira mentioned about the uh, risks, uh, you know, related to the Chinese markets, but you know, I mean, I, I wonder, uh, aren't uh, Taiwanese companies are also considered as companies that associated with this Taiwan contingency and also the possible war with China? But like, why, why, you know, if Jira is right about this, uh, wh what else we can we can overcome? Like for the the companies from Taiwan. To kind of work on, uh, uh, you know, on the one hand, upgrades uh, its its uh, 
uh, competitive, competitiveness, but also on the other hand, uh, kind of tell the uh, foreign investor that uh, Taiwan is a, is a right place to invest and perhaps e even safer than China, uh, Chinese market to invest. Uh, what, what's your take on this? Uh, I think uh, Taiwanese companies uh, started to invest in China uh, in late 1980s and in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And during that time, it was the post-Cold War era and mm -hmm. the, uh, those political factors which can influence FDI was highly uh, marginalized because mm -hmm. everybody believed, okay, it's the end of the mm -hmm. major conflict and uh, we can live in a happy world and uh, the global globalization mm -hmm. has uh, taken place to accelerate. So we can have this happy uh, environment to mm -hmm. do business. So a lot of Taiwanese uh, businessmen uh, went to China to invest and to use, uh, to take advantage of those opportunities, the land, uh, uh, cheap labor force, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the uh, context we need to take into account. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the situation has, uh, is very different right now, and uh, those are political uh, risks and uh, security issues and uh, supply chain reshuffle, all these kind of things uh, have added up to make uh, 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 enterprises, uh, not just Chinese companies, but also companies all over the world to rethink mm -hmm. about their strategy in China. Mm -hmm. And for Chinese company, of course, uh, I think they, uh, we need to uh, categorize uh, different industry. They have mm -hmm. different uh, perspective regarding mm -hmm. their investment in China. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, 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 Ting, mm -hmm. right? Mr. Ting, I think uh, he's uh, from right. Kimco, right? Mm -hmm. That's the manufactured right. industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the manufactured industry can be very different from like food industry mm -hmm. or uh, some kind of service industry. Right. So manufacturing inter industry, they can diversify their investment. They, mm -hmm. had, they, have, they can build the division of labor mm -hmm. across the Taiwan Strait. Mm -hmm. they, had, they can focus those uh, most sophisticated uh, uh, manufacturing capacity and the lows are in Taiwan mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, put uh, lower end uh, productions in China. Those mm -hmm. kind of division of labor is possible. Mm -hmm. But for uh, service oriented industry, I think this kind of uh, operation is, uh, is more challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to rely on Chinese market to boost their revenue. So mm -hmm. uh, I think the situation uh, should, be, uh, should be observed uh, differently from mm -hmm. uh, industry to industry. Okay, great. Um, so Charles, uh, do you agree uh, with the, uh, Mr. Tin's perspective that uh, the companies in town can seize the opportunity to kind of fit in uh, in the whole uh, supply chain, uh, kind of orchestrated uh, orchestra uh, by the Western, uh, uh, you know, uh, countries, uh, I in the context that when the Chinese economy is still suffering from the recession. Yeah, I mean, this is a big question. Uh, mm -hmm. People always, or mm -hmm. Taiwanese industries, always talk about mm -hmm. how to we call uh, kind of um, delink mm -hmm. or kind of move the industry. Mm -hmm some part of out of China, mm -hmm. starting from the trade war, mm -hmm. Sino-US Sino trade war, mm -hmm. 2018, mm -hmm. okay? And then the then pandemic, because zero pandemic policies. Mm -hmm. There are some Taiwanese companies start to think whether they can kind of uh, put the risk, mm -hmm. don't put all the eggs in the same basket, right. de-risk. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this some question I agree with Professor Yen is first, is different mm -hmm. industries, they have different uh, we call the agenda mm -hmm. uh, about how to spread out their risk. Mm -hmm. For example, some electronic industry, it's very hard for them to move all the in, uh, factories in China. Mm -hmm. uh, some mm -hmm. investor already did this research. They need six months to 24 months to what? To build a new factory mm -hmm. in, for example, in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. in, 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 in India in, or in Indonesia or Vietnam. So for electronic companies, uh, they has to hesitate mm -hmm. and also think about how to spread out the, the risk. Mm -hmm. However, some country, for example, for the mechanics, for the or uh, for the machine machinery mm -hmm. industry, uh, I, I read one uh, story about the Liu Feng industry, which is a brand uh, company of Hu Te Liu He. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, they have uh, invested in mainland China for a long time, mm -hmm. and because they build out all these kind of OEM parts for cars. Mm -hmm. And the, the reporter asked them whether you want to uh, move from China. They said, no, we'll stay there because mm -hmm. China is a big market for right. the car industries. Mm -hmm. So they are hesitant to move out. Mm -hmm. So we need to, for Taiwan, we need to help those companies which is 
will, willing to move back on China, mm. even move back to Taiwan. Because mm. in Taiwan, we have some, also some serious issues about, we call it fire shortage. Mm. We are short of water, we are short of land, yeah. short of labor, and short of in, uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. How can we overcome these issues is mm -hmm. the first thing we need to give this credit to the companies. And then how to bring them to Taiwan, mm -hmm. uh, how about the tax reductions, uh, also other kind of benefits or credits we can give the mm -hmm. Taiwanese business is uh, the first thing we, we, we need to think about. Mm -hmm. Taiwan considers China a crucial export market and its primary source of trade surplus. Consequently, any deflationary pressures within the Chinese economy could prevent considerable challenges to Taiwan's own economy and exports. Now, let's delve into how Taiwan should adapt and respond to the evolving economic situation in China. Ji Ho, as a DPP city councillor, yeah. uh, you know, you are a politician from DPP. Yeah. So even you would uh, acknowledge that it is impossible to completely disconnect with the Chinese market, of course, from Taiwan's perspective, even even mm -hmm. with the country that's most likely to go to war with with China, the United States, uh -huh. they still they have still, the, yeah. a, a large presence and right. reliance on on each other. So these things are almost normal mm -hmm. in international trade and, okay. and, and diplomacy where uh, two seemingly contradictory uh, tr uh, uh, trend is, is going at the same time. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, it, that does not change the nature mm -hmm. of uh, 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 how we pr uh, perceive ourselves mm -hmm. in internationally mm -hmm. and how we uh, tr uh, deal with our trade partners economically. Mm -hmm. Okay. The economic slowdown in China has not only affected its own business, but also had a notable impact on Taiwanese companies. Major Taiwanese food corporations such as Master Kong Holdings, Una Preston Enterprises Corp, and Wang Wang China Holdings experienced a sharp decline in profits, plunging by nearly 20% to 30% and reaching a nadir in recent years. Furthermore, data reveals that Taiwanese investment in China declined by 10.4%, in the first quarter of this year, totaling uh, 758 million. Considering these challenges, how will Taiwanese companies adapt uh, their market strategies in China going forward? Um, you know, this question goes to Yongming. Uh, we, we, you know, you just mentioned that different industry needs to adopt different strategies. Yes. So could you specify that a little bit more? Well, the company you just mentioned, all those are food companies, right? Mm -hmm. Wang Wang, uh, Uni Preston. Mm -hmm. So those companies, they, their revenue heavily relies on their performance in Chinese market. So like uh, the Kang Shi Fu, the, the instant noodle, they, they made a good fortune uh, decades ago. But nowadays, the situation uh, is much different. And uh, due to the economic decline of Chinese, mar uh, Chinese economy, they uh, suffer uh, seriously in uh, their revenues. Mm -hmm. So uh, domestic if the domestic economy in China declines, these uh, food companies or the service-oriented company I just mentioned, and they will suffer, uh, they will directly uh, uh, affect it. And um, I think a similar situation may also arise from agricultural or fishery products exported from Taiwan to China. Mm. Uh, those items are on the early harvest list of, of ECFA. Mm. Yeah. And however, uh, for Taiwanese manufacturing companies or machinery companies, I think the situation is a little bit different uh, because the Chinese market represents only a portion of their revenue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, they suffer in Chinese markets, but, but they can find compensation from other markets all over the world. Mm -hmm. Moreover, in recent years, those companies uh, have already undertaken capacity transfers due to the supply chain reshuffle. Mm -hmm. So the impact on land should not be too significant. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, so Charles, so wha wha what's your take on this? I mean, wha why do Chinese companies also kind of suffer uh, just because of this Chinese uh, economic recession? Uh, I mean, it's obviously when they suffer from the zero COVID policies, mm -hmm. uh, the domestic consumption declines, mm -hmm. those Taiwanese big uh, companies, they will suffer from the downturn, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. However, we, we need to be aware that uh, the Taiwanese companies they also have s has some strategy mm -hmm. uh, about what we call the China plus one, because mm -hmm. uh, during, uh, especially during the trade war and mm -hmm. also the COVID, mm -hmm. uh, they have to move some parts of the factory to, for example, Southeast Asia, Asia mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Latin America, mm -hmm. try to reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. 
then uh, if this is a China password strategy, and we can see uh, Taiwanese companies or the foreign companies, they are trying to find out other additional supply chain mm. which can uh, reduce their cost. Mm. And then their revenue will going back. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, Taiwanese company, one thing they still very, very careful is how can they uh, if they still want to make money from China, mm. they need to what explore the opportunities, especially domestic opportunity for expanding their markets. Mm -hmm. So right now, I, I heard a lot of uh, Taiwanese companies, uh, big like Wang Wang or Kang Sifu, mm -hmm. or even some uh, we call major Taiwanese entrepreneurs. They are trying to expanding their domestic sales in China, also entering domestic demand market uh, in China by exploring the network mm -hmm. with Chinese government. Mm -hmm. Like what I say, they try to promote more these kind of advertisements, mm -hmm. try to have more some these kind of you know promotions mm -hmm. for their products and goods. Uh, I believe, I mean, Chinese people they will, they will try to get back to their normal life mm -hmm. because uh, the inflation, I mean, the deflation or we call the PPI the zero point something zero point one, is abnormal, mm -hmm. abnormal, mm -hmm. and it will create a huge economic stagnations for their uh, uh, economy in general. Okay, uh, let's now talk about the economic cohesion of the. Chinese Communist Party. Uh, in the past, China has used economic cohesion to abstract countries from engaging in economic and trade exchanges with Taiwan. Now, with China facing challenges in sustaining its economic growth, is it possible for Taiwan to seize this opportunity to open doors for economic cooperation with other countries? Uh, I guess this question goes to Ji Ho. Yeah. Yeah, well, I see uh, uh, again a parallel from the 90s mm -hmm. to now. Mm -hmm. uh, in the early 90s, uh, that's when, uh, right after the uh, Tiananmen Square mm -hmm. uh, incident or mm -hmm. massacre occurred, China was facing embargo from the globe. Mm -hmm. And Ch the Taiwanese businessmen, Taiwanese money, mm -hmm. were the first mm -hmm. or the only uh, force of investment mm -hmm. going into China like no one is there. And, and that sort of uh, it brought about the, the first wave of the Chinese uh, mm -hmm. recent uh, uh, economic uh, uh, sort of uh, development mm -hmm. uh, solely on Taiwanese money. Mm -hmm. And that happened, that's almost happening again this time around where uh, the U.S. is, is restricting the uh, s uh, several uh, s security sectors and, and high-tech uh, chips uh, from uh, the trading and, uh, and uh, corroborating with China. Mm -hmm. So the similar embargo is not embargo, but a, s a similar kind of restriction is happening. But this time around, the Taiwanese businessmen, except for several uh, like Wang Wang and other mm -hmm. uh, industries, are not as keen on going into the, the uh, no man's land mm -hmm. where uh, other uh, FDIs are fleeing. The, the Taiwanese business is not doing the same this time around. The Taiwanese business this time is following the trend where these uh, global uh, FDIs are going. Uh, we, we're going to India, we're going to Southeast mm -hmm. Asia, and Latin America and elsewhere uh, to seek other, uh, to, to establish a new uh, uh, production chain. Mm -hmm. So I think in that sense, we are diversifying and we are uh, 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 seeding this, this opportunity to, to make new uh, economic partnerships with other countries. And, and yes, uh, for the past uh, several uh, years, Taiwan has lost several of our key uh, 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 countries that we used to have uh, very good relations with uh, due to the Chinese coercion, mm -hmm. uh, either politically or economically. Mm -hmm. But this time, this time around, I think uh, w we are seeing an improvement of the Taiwan-U.S. Uh, trade uh, relations and, mm -hmm. and uh, Taiwan's uh, uh, substantial trade mm -hmm. relations with major players mm -hmm. in the world economy. And hence, that actually enhances mm -hmm. uh, uh, Taiwan's uh, sort of uh, uh, room for uh, negotiations with, uh, to uh, re-engage with uh, some of these uh, partners in the past and engage with new partners mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the, in this episode, we still have to touch a little bit on the U.S.-China relations. Um, on recent development, U.S. Treasury uh, Secretary Janet Yellen recently concluded her inaugural visit to China. Uh, despite Yellen's assertion that U.S. is not actively pursuing a for tat approach in trade matters, there are plans to limit Chinese companies' access to cloud computing services and advanced uh, semiconductors. 
in response, you know, China also has its own advantage, uh, the revenge, has begun to restrict the export of specific rare metals, not notably gallium and uh, germanium, which are extensively uh, utilized uh, in semiconductors, electrical vehicles, and high-tech industries. So is it evident that the trade war between the two superpowers remain highly intense, even though we already saw the uh, high-profile profo uh, officials like Blinken visited China? Maybe Charles. Yeah, it definitely is a tip of tat. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a tip of tat. Mm -hmm. But usually we use tip of tat for how to build up cooperations. Mm -hmm. But this tip of tat for you, between United States and China is more competitions. Mm -hmm. Normally it is a trade competition or we call the high tech competition mm -hmm. or chip war competitions. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see uh, when Biden administration announced the uh, US Chips and Science Act mm -hmm. and also encouraged some like uh, democratic partners, for example, Japan mm -hmm. and Netherlands to put the constraint on China. Mm -hmm. China announced what? They shut down. They, they put the the ban on the Micron's mm -hmm. company in mm -hmm. China. Mm -hmm. Okay, the major uh, the chip factories, and then uh, United States respond with what respond? They said well, they will start to ask, uh, for example, Nvidia mm -hmm. or like uh, AMD to stop the selling high end chips to China. Right. Then China respond to what they they ban the, the special we call the the, the metals, mm -hmm. uh, the germanium and uh, uh, another one. Uh, mm -hmm. Selling to to mm -hmm. other words. Right. So this is one thing we need to pay attention to. Uh, if this is a very critical uh, T for TED, mm -hmm. what the result and what we can see. Mm -hmm. Like what I mentioned, China controls about sixty percent of germanium mm -hmm. and gallium. Mm -hmm. These are two very special metals when we try to produce semiconductors, mm -hmm. and we usually use it for, for example, LEDs or CD players. Mm -hmm. However, right now they're talking about semiconductors. Mm -hmm. This uh, very rare metals mm -hmm. is very critical. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the ingredients for uh, semiconducting mm -hmm. chips. Mm -hmm. Then uh, how can we handle that? One thing we need to be aware is some people argue uh, even China controls 60%, mm -hmm. they will not give that kind of you know big shock or this grand slam on the, the, mm -hmm. the, the international markets mm -hmm. on the semiconductors mm -hmm. because uh, the other producers can find a t additional way to mm -hmm. produce very similar metal mm -hmm. on the semiconductors. Mm -hmm. So uh, even China you know, this time tried to use this as a tip for tat. However, mm -hmm. this kind of side effects it was not that strong. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the future, we can see whether China and the United States can get back to normal or cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, we still need to see how these two giants, mm -hmm. big giants, mm -hmm. they view each other. If mm -hmm. you they view still each other as rivalries, mm -hmm. they still only pay attention to containment mm -hmm. or balance of power, mm -hmm. it's very hard for them to do this kind of cooperations, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If they only pay attention to reality gains rather than absolute gains mm -hmm. in our, our theories, mm -hmm. there were no way, no room mm -hmm. for the two giants to cooperate. In this episode, we focused on China's economic prospects. We know that China has been an attractive market for Western companies to sell products and set up manufacturing facilities. However, under President Xi, China's economy has increasingly diverged from the West's pre preferred path. This situation not only affects Taiwan, but also provides an opportunity for Taiwan to mitigate risks associated with China by diversifying its economic engagements. Did you enjoy our show? Leave a comment on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, take care.